Okay, so this is how to create and use Nautilus scripts. So what Nautilus scripts allow you to do is add extra functionality to your Nautilus file browser. So if I just right click on this image, what we're going to do is add another item to this list called scripts that will hold our Nautilus scripts. So first of all, to add that item, all we need to do is create a scripts directory, but we have to create it in a specific place. So if you just open your home directory and what you want to do is view hidden files. Now you can do this by holding control and pressing H like that. So you can see the dot files or you can just come up to this menu here and click show hidden files. So the scripts directory that we need to create has to be created in a specific place, which is in dot local share Nautilus. And we need to create it here. So just right click and new folder and we just need to call it scripts and that's it. So if we just go back to our previous directory, which is on the desktop and just right click on a file, you'll see that we don't have our new entry yet. And that's because we need to at least put one script in our scripts directory. So I've actually just created a test script for this. So I'm just going to copy that and let's just go back to home dot local share nautilus and scripts and let's just paste that in and there's one more thing that we need to do and that is make this script executable so if we just right click and then open in terminal that will open up a terminal whose working directory is within that directory so we're in local share nautilus scripts and we just want to chmod u plus x and the name of our script. So now it's executable, we can get rid of this. And if we just go back to our desktop and to that directory, if we now right click on a file, we have our scripts item here and our test script is being listed. Now we can also get to our scripts directory just by clicking this option here, which is open scripts folder. So if we just click on our test script to run it, you'll see that a file has been generated here. So let's open this file. And let's just open it with Sublime. So there we go. So when you run a Nautilus script, Nautilus creates a couple of environment variables. So let's look at the first of these variables. So it's Nautilus underscore script underscore selected underscore file underscore paths. And what this is, is a new line separated list of all of the file paths of the selected files that you had selected at the time when you ran your script. So you'll notice that we only have one file name here. So one file path here. The next environment variable that Nautilus creates is the similar to this one, but it's the URI version. And then we have this one over here, which is the Nautilus script current URI. So this is the current directory that our script was running. So as you can see, it's on our desktop and it's that directory Nautilus scripts. And the last environment variable that it creates is the window geometry for that specific instance of Nautilus. So it's the width of that window, which is 1920, and the height, which is 1012, and then the X and Y coordinates of the top left corner of that window. So let's close this and then let's run it again, but this time for two files. Just right click scripts and test. And then we can just open our file up again with Sublime. So you can see that we now have two entries for our selected paths and selected URIs, but we still have the same current working directory. So the current URI to our working directory that this script was triggered in and the geometry of our window hasn't changed. So let's just close this and let's have a look at the actual script that generated this. So if we just go to home, local, share, Nautilus, scripts, and let's open this with Vim. So let's modify this script that I wrote to make smaller versions of any images that are selected. So we can start by just getting rid of the lower half. So if we just jump down here, we can just get rid of that. We're going to keep this for loop and modify it. We're going to get rid of this and we're going to get rid of this line here. So these are the lines that we're going to keep. 
So IFS is the internal field separator. And what this is doing is it's telling Bash that we want to use new line characters as our separator instead of what it previously had, which in my case is spaces. Now this is needed because if we had any spaces within our file paths, so as you can have spaces within file names, this would actually, when we iterate over this variable here, what would happen is our script would pick up the first part of that file path as and treat it as one file path. And then the next bit after the space, it would think that that was a separate file. But as we know, both of those files don't exist. So let's just modify this and let's use FFmpeg to do our image rescaling. So let's just come down to this line and let's just delete this. We don't need that. We'll keep the dollar I and we'll just delete everything up until the end of the screen. Okay, so what we want to do is FFmpeg and then dash I is going to be the full path to our image. So dollar I in this case. In fact, let's change that actually. So instead of I, let's change it to file path. And actually, let's make it all caps. So file path. And this is going to change to dollar file path. And now let's use a video filter and its scale that we want to use. And let's say, let's make very tiny versions of our images. So we want to scale the width to 100 pixels. And we want to maintain the aspect ratio, so just minus one. And now we need to set our output file name. So let's keep the original file name, but prepend it with something like small underscore. So to do that, we can just type in small underscore. And here's one thing that we need to remember. We can't put dollar file path because that is going to be the full file path to that file. So that's going to be something like slash home slash Linux leech slash desktop and then the name of the file. What we're really interested in is just the end part of our file path where it has the actual file name. So to get that, there's a number of ways that we can do it, but I'm just going to use base name and command substitution. So we want dollar, open up brackets, base name. And now we need to provide our file path. So dollar file path and just close off this command substitution and that should do it. So let's just go over this quickly. So what we're doing is we're iterating over this environment variable, which is a list of file paths, and we're providing them one at a time to an instance of FFmpeg over here, converting the scale of the image, and then we're creating a new file name, which is going to be small underscore and then the original name of that file. And this will also keep the original extension. So we're not going to be transcoding JPEGs to PNGs or PNGs to JPEGs and so on. So let's just save and quit this. And let's just go back to our desktop and back to where our images are. Let's just delete this Nautilus script file here. So if we just right click on one image and then run our test script, you'll see that it's generated another image. So if we just right click on this and look for details, so image, you can see that the width is 100 pixels and the height is now 150 pixels. So if we just compare that to our original image, so properties, image, you can see that we've successfully shrunk our image. So let's do it to a couple of other images. So we don't have to just select one. In fact, let's just delete this. We can select a number of images. So let's just select them all, right click, scripts and test. And as you can see, it's generated four new images. So let's just open them. So you can see they're really tiny images. So there's the first one second, third, and fourth. And now here are the original images. So let's just maximize this. So there's the first one, second, third, and fourth. So what would happen if we just select a directory? So let's just delete these and let's go back up to the desktop and let's try and run our script on this directory to see what happens. So it looks like nothing's happened yet. Let's have a look inside it. None of our images have been scaled. And what about if we have a file that's not an image? So let's just create one. So let's just touch a file. Uh, let's just call it file a.txt. 
So it's just a text file with no information in it. And let's just get rid of this. So if we select all of these, let's see what happens if we have a file that's not supposed to be there in that list. So test. So you can see it generated the four files that we were expecting, but it didn't do anything with this text file, which is exactly what we would have expected. So as that file path would have been provided to FFmpeg, FFmpeg would have detected that this isn't an image and it probably would have just thrown an error. But as we're running FFmpeg in a loop, the error gets thrown and then the loop just iterates to the next item in the list. So you're not limited to only having one script. You can put as many scripts as you want within that directory. And you can pretty much run anything that you can script. One other thing is that you don't have to write your scripts in bash. You can use any scripting language that you want. So you could write a script in Python or Perl or pretty much anything will run as long as you can execute it. So a couple of ideas that you can use this for are maybe you have video files that you're always transcoding to different sizes or you have specific filters or LUTs that you like to apply to video clips and you do it often. You don't have to keep typing in long FFmpeg command lines. You can literally just set up a script and then right click and just run it on any files that you select within your Nautilus file browser. So you can basically create things that are as complex or as simple as you want. The only limiting factor is your ability to script it or find a script that does what you want. It would be interesting to see what kind of Nautilus script ideas you guys can come up with. So drop those in the comments, but that's basically how to create and use Nautilus scripts. And I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to like and share this video as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. So thanks for watching and goodbye.